Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Matt with Dragon Sword Gaming. Uh, today, we're going to be doing a DC HDMI install in this uh, Sega Dreamcast, uh, as well as replacing all the capacitors uh, in the console with new caps from uh, Console 5, and doing the fan mod, uh, installing a Noctua 5 volt fan, thanks to um, uh, Thingiverse user Greg Collins for designing this, um, as well as replacing the old battery with a socket and uh, a brand new battery uh, that way a uh, customer won't have to desolder the battery himself to change it out in the future now he can just pop it out himself so let's get started okay so first things first we'll get this thing opened up I'm still using this uh, I fix it kit like I said I only use this just so you can follow along uh, I try to include uh, links and they're not affiliate links or anything like that. It's just I really like this kit because it makes it a lot easier uh, I mean everything's right here in one. There's definitely higher quality screwdrivers and stuff like that uh, but uh, uh, For the novice this is definitely something uh, uh, That's an easy 30 bucks to spend So let's start with the number two Phillips out of the kit And then on the back side here We've got one, two, three, and behind our modem here is four. I like to use a, uh, this is, just came out of a uh, phone uh, repair kit. I like to use that to get in there. And there you go, it's that easy. Let's see. Okay, this number two is working good, so we'll pull these out. May need an extension on these. I haven't tried this yet. It just barely catches. Got this nice new uh, blue ESD mat as well, uh, which I was hoping would work out better for my videos because that gray one, I was especially if I was working on something that was white, uh, or if I had white pieces of paper, I'd start to get a lot of vertical lines uh, on the screen. So we'll see if this will help with that. Okay. So I've got these four screws out, and if I can find, there it is. I always keep my screws in a little magnetic tray. It makes it a lot easier when I'm putting everything back together. Uh, this is from uh, one of my eBay customers, uh, Max. So I'm going to, he, he did ask that I take uh, good care of this because uh, he thought it was in uh, pretty good condition. So we will... Make sure to take extra good care of his console. Everything in here appears to be stock, stock fan, still have the original battery, uh, hasn't been upgraded to the uh, GDMU or the GD-ROM, uh, USB GD-ROM. Okay, so to start with, like I usually like to start, I'll just um, uh, break this thing all the way down um, so that I can go ahead and uh, give this case uh, a light clean. So we're gonna start with that. Number two again. Okay. So let's go ahead. I think I'll start with start with the um, uh, the controller PCB here. So we've got one, two, three, and four. Uh, number two, Phillips. This is my fashionable pair of needle nose. Try to remove our. That might not be the best one for that. Let me try this instead. There we go. Now we're good. Just a little dental tool. Pull that out. That way you're not yanking out the uh, wires of your fan here. Uh, while you're trying to remove that now when I <clears throat> when I do the uh, fan mod on this I actually uh, I, I cut this off and I steal this connector and I put it on uh, to the knock to a fan and I wire that up um, not sure if I'll show that or not in this video I, I'm I might as well that way uh, somebody else can do it so from there let's go ahead and remove our ribbon cable 
get that out, set that off to the side, and then we can go ahead and remove this. Now, um, this plastic piece up front here is actually tucked underneath the heat shield back here, so you can't get this piece off, but you can get this out. Uh, usually I'll just grab the battery if it's still in there and just pull this uh, uh, plastic piece forward and then tilt uh, the PCB backwards and then that'll get it out of the control ports and then you can just pull it out like that. So let's get our four screws out. Okay, and we'll have to uh, replace this battery in a moment. But I'm just trying to get this thing broke down so that uh, we can get it cleaned up. So from there, let's go ahead and let's get this fan out of our way. Now for that, you're probably going to need, let's see here, the iFixit kit. Let's do a Let's try a number one and see. There we go. Like I said, I have all my own screwdrivers that I, I usually use, but just while I'm recording these videos, um, I like to use this. That way, like I said, if you're a novice and you want to follow along and you spend 30 bucks on a kit that's got every um, uh, bit in it that you would need, uh, working on all these old consoles and stuff like that. It just makes it a lot easier. So use whatever you've got Okay, here's our old fan. We'll get that off to the side and There we go Okay, so next I think we'll start with Let's go ahead and get the um, I think let's get the power supply out of here. So let's do that next so we've got uh, one Phillips uh, number two here and one tucked back behind uh, this plug here. So let me go get our Phillips number two. Okay. I really do like this blue mat. It looks nice. Okay, so go ahead and remove this one. And then Squeeze our connector here and rock it back and forth while lifting up. Might not be able to do that left handed. There we go. And now we can get at this screw. So with all that, the only thing that's holding this in place now is the, um, uh, uh, the pins right here. You've got six pins that connect this uh, power board to the motherboard. And all you have to do is pull up but one more thing to note is there's a little plastic connector right here i'll try to zoom in for you let's see try not to get you motion sick doing it let's see oh back it up back it up back it up in there okay so this little tab here if you if you hold that over and then just pull up a little bit on this pcb you can get it out of there see like that and then right here these six are what's uh, holding this thing in place. Let me back this up a little. Okay. So now I like to hold it back here in the back and then use my thumb and pry it upwards. Rock it, rock it, rock it, rock it. Two hours later. There we go. And that was the only thing holding that in, was the those six pins coming through this PCB and locking into those tabs there. All right, so uh, we are replacing all the through-hole capacitors on this thing, so we'll just set this off to the side too. Everything in here is looking really clean, uh, but I do like to give everything a, uh, a good wipe down just to make sure. We'll set this off to the side too. Okay, usually I don't remove this, but eh, for the sake of the video, we'll go ahead and break it all the way down. Get that out of there. There we go. Okay, from there, let's go ahead and get our laser assembly out of here. We've got one, two, three, uh, number two Phillips. Let's get these out. Okay, and with those out, now there's a socket located 
uh, right under here that's uh, attaching this uh, to the motherboard down here. Uh, so just get you a good grip and then slowly rock it. I mean, I'm already loose already. That was easy. <laughs> and that's it. We have, let me get these out of the way. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six black uh, Phillips. So these are, I believe, let's double check, the same as the, yes. So these are the same as the ones that hold your case together. Same size, same pitch, all that. So we have three black screws here and three down the side. And there is a magnet in the uh, iFixit kit, but I actually found this one. I was uh, used to work construction. <laughs> and I found this just laying in the grass out on the construction site and uh, had it ever since. Anyways, we've got two more, the brass colored screws to remove, which are all the same. Uh, the only ones of these that are different are, you have the four uh, longer brass colored screws that are the ones that hold your controller PCB in. So you have those four that are different. And then holding in your fan are uh, these two round top uh, screws. Other than that, uh, when you're putting everything back together, as long as you can remember you got three black screws here and three down the side, uh, it's pretty easy to get everything back where it goes. I do like to mention that because sometimes I hate when I'm going back watching a video or even watching my own video and I don't bring that up. So let's see. So from there, this is actually another spot where I like to use my magnet uh, just because I got big fat fingers and I can't fit them in there. I can just use this to grab the shielding and then pull up. And there are a few thermal pads uh, between this uh, shielding in the motherboard uh, so your your motherboard may lift up uh, when you do this so I'll just make sure to support the motherboard as well underneath with my finger and then just lift up and that's it we're out okay so for the motherboard I'll just leave it uh, like this for now and set it off to the side and get down to the bottom of this case. Uh, here's two thermal pads that you need to make sure uh, uh, to keep track of. So I'll set these both off to the side so that I can put them back uh, later uh, because we will be doing some cutting to this case. All right, let's try our magnet again to get this out. There we go. All right. I'll just set this off to the side too. Okay, so now we are down to the two halves of our case. Um, the plastic piece, uh, like I said, was held underneath the motherboard, so now we can just go ahead and remove that so we can get that cleaned up as well. Might go ahead. I like to, anytime I'm working on anything and it has bu buttons, I like to remove the button. Uh, we will be uh, removing all this as well to install the fan mod, but we'll get into that later. So I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and just remove this button. And that just had two tabs that you squeeze and pop this out. There we go. Power button down. And then for this, we'll just go ahead and remove the spring. Uh, so we just have this one spring uh, to remove, so you can make sure the orientation there. Let's see. So, just another pair of pliers. Could have done that with my hand, but then my big fat fingers would have been in the way. So just set this uh, spring off to the side. And then let's go ahead and switch back to our number one. Phillips and we'll remove those two screws and those two are obviously uh, different screws as well but from here we can go ahead and remove this piece so 
set that off to the side. And same thing, we'll squeeze these two tabs and push the uh, open button out. So there you go. And then from there, whatever you, you have, you can just push that out. Okay, and that's about as far as I typically tear these down. So I'm going to speed through this process. It's it's the same thing I do every time. I uh, just use some 90% uh, uh, isopropyl alcohol. I get my stuff from Walgreens here locally. You can get it at Walmart. Uh, usually, sometimes they, they don't have uh, uh, that. And then also I use tons of uh, Lysol wipes. got our uh, top shelf nice and cleaned up, uh, cleaned down in here too, uh, that way if you get uh, sticky buttons or anything like that it will take care of that. So we'll set this off to the side and then go ahead and do the same with the bottom. Uh, usually it's there's not too much going on in here but we'll just do a, a uh, little bit of a wipe down. Okay, and then on the shielding, same thing, I just give it a little bit of a wipe down, make sure that I get all the uh, uh, dust and stuff off it. This is really a, a pretty clean console. Same thing with this, we'll just give this a little light. What else we got? Okay. Do these real quick. So, for the buttons, and the front, I, I like to make sure to get in here with the toothbrush. That way, all this embossed stuff here, I can actually get in there and clean it out. Uh, same thing, I just use uh, isopropyl alcohol. Okay, and all those uh, three pieces cleaned up nicely. So we'll set these off to the side. Okay, so that takes care of all everything except for uh, this piece of shielding here. Pull this up. And this may have came off uh, when you remove that um, uh, from the board, depending on how well that thermal pad's actually holding. You can see that uh, it, it didn't take much for me to get this uh, pulled off here with these two big. Uh, pads that are on the uh, bigger chips on here. So same thing with this. I'll just give this a, a quick wipe down uh, and set it off to the side. Let's start with something easy just to get us warmed up. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and desolder this uh, um, the old battery that is almost certainly dead uh, in this thing and get it replaced with that socket. I ordered those sockets from uh, console 5 and then the batteries I order off of uh, Amazon. I'll try to leave uh, links in the description for all that stuff so uh, you can find it. So I've got my Heiko FR300 warming up. Let me grab a couple of things here. So I always like to start when I'm desoldering something with my uh, desoldering station or the FR300. Just to add a little bit of uh, solder to all of these. This just helps get stuff uh, flowing good for that uh, FR300 to be able to extract those. Uh, one thing I have noticed, uh, especially working with the Dreamcast, uh, especially recapping it, there are huge like ground planes uh, and, and I end up having to use a lot more heat than I usually would uh, to extract any of the components, uh, which we might get into uh, later when we're recapping the motherboard. So anyways, we added a little bit of fresh solder to those. We'll bring in our FR300. Let's see 
how we did. See if I can get a zoomed in here. There we go. Looks like that one's clean. That one's clean. And this one may or may not be. So what I'll do is I'll just rock this back and forth and see what's going on. You can see this one moving. Looks like they all are loose. So I'm just going to slowly rock that back and forth. Looks like maybe this one I could try one more time here. There we go. So our old battery is out of there. There is no way to get this wrong. <laughs> so, I mean, maybe if you try to install it like this for some reason, but we're not gonna do that. So go ahead and get that in there. Make sure you're setting all the way down. You know, before I do that, I'm gonna clean up some of this old spent flux that's on here real quick. Just easier to do when there's not pins in the way. I'm just going to tack this in place on these two ground connections here, here, and just see how that's looking. And I called those ground, but those are not ground. I think what I'll do is I'm just going to heat that up to get this to drop down a little further. There we go, there we go. Earthquake. Okay, so that is tacked in. Oh, I'll go ahead and just a little bit of solder on that ground plane there. And then I'm going to come back with some flux. I just like to get a little bit in those holes so that the flux isn't just leaking straight through and getting in that socket. And then I'll come back and get some good heat and add some nice solder to all these. I'll let this ground plane sit just a little longer than usual just to make sure that that's making a good connection there. There we go. <coughs> I always like to even though I use no clean and good solder, I like to come back and clean it anyways. Just cost me a Q-tip and a little bit of alcohol. So there we go, that's it. Um, I could go ahead and, let's see. So these batteries, uh, these are the same one that uh, Retro RGB had in their description. Uh, these are the uh, cheaper ones, uh, but I have not had any issues with these. He said he had untested those. Uh, in, in my testing, these are working fine, and they're about half the price of uh, uh, a uh, name brand battery. So let's see here. Plus, is plus, and that's it. It's that easy for customer to now change out his battery himself later on if he has to. Uh, all he's got to do is remove four screws and then he can get right to this, pop this out, and, and replace it. So there we go. That one's done. One of our mods is finished. Okay, so let's move on to something a little more technical here. Uh, nothing too bad, but we're going to go ahead and replace all the caps on this uh, power supply in the console. Uh, like I said, I ordered these caps from console 5. I could totally put these cap kits together myself, um, but I, I just choose to support uh, Luke over at console 5. Uh, he's done a great job of, of already sourcing all the caps and putting everything together and making the map. So anytime I can, I can uh, uh, support somebody, uh, especially small business like that, I, I always do. Okay, so 
Get our caps out. Nothing too crazy on this one. Uh, just make sure that, I mean, the way I like to do it is either I'll have, I'll print out the uh, capacitor map from uh, console 5 if he's got one and use that, or I'll just do an R&R &R and, and remove and replace uh, one at a time. And that's probably what I'll end up doing here. Uh, you're less likely to mess up doing that. So let's get started. So I'm going to go ahead and start way over here on this big cap. We'll get this one removed. Okay, so we've got these two legs here and make sure. Okay, so these are these uh, two caddy corner uh, legs here. So I think what I'll do it's up to you if you want to do it like this, but what I will do is just get in here and clip those legs off a little bit. And just be very careful not to uh, cut through that solder mask or anything. I, I just I make sure that I'm not touching the PCB when I do that. Okay. So let's go ahead and add a little bit of solder to those two now. Like I said, that is this one and this one okay took our FR300 I like to try to bend that leg straight and that's also let me put plenty of heat on this Okay, yeah, they bend those legs uh, way over, so you got to try to uh, get those bent back straight so you can get that out. Uh, but we've got this one removed. This is 200 volt, uh, 100 microfarad. So I'll just, like I said, I'm going to remove that, and then we'll just go ahead and replace it right away. So here is our uh, 200 volt, 100 microfarad. Just make sure you're getting your polarity correct. They're all marked on the board, so. Okay, so I think we'll go ahead and try to knock out these three here. Actually, let's go ahead and get this one. And made quick work of this little through hole capacitor so this is a 47 microfarad 35 volt so I'm just gonna go through and check this is um 47 microfarad this is it right here um, so Luke sometimes will uh, take that up in voltage which is fine um, so the one we removed was a 47 microfarad 35 volt and now we are putting in a 47 microfarad 50 volt. Alright, so now we have those two changed out. Now let's go ahead and shotgun get these three out here. Like I said, sometimes you have to, I mean, you can just <laughs> rip it out of there. Uh, uh, but if this was like a dual layer board and you were, um, you had contacts on this top side, there's a good chance you would just rip that out of there. Um, uh, so just take your time um, and, and watch the pins when I'm, when I'm desoldering this. I'm always rocking the uh, uh, capacitor back and forth. Even when I pull the tip away, I keep rocking it. And that way, um, the, the solder never really wants to catch it. It'll, it'll just stay uh, on the pad and not on the uh, 
uh, capacitor. So we got this one removed as a 3300 microfarad 10 volt. So we will replace that with this one. Now this is bigger, so we might have to, let's see. See if I can get this in here. It seemed like, yeah, last time I did this that I actually had to get it pushed over just a little because this is a um, a wider capacitor, which we might have to do the same, so let's do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove uh, the next capacitor in line. You see how I keep, keep moving that while I'm doing that? It just keeps it from from uh, reconnecting any little bit of solder that might be left because they've got these things that are, are, are those, they bend those legs so far over that they, they touch no matter what. So let's remove this one. This is a uh, 2200 microfarad 10 volt. So I'm gonna go ahead and find that one. Okay, and here it is. So let's go ahead and get this one back in here first and then I'll bring back the um, uh, 3300 that way that I can make sure that we have the room. There we go. So get that to fit in between those two components there. And then I'll go ahead and bend these legs over. Okay. That looks fine. I'll go ahead and uh, tack those up. And like I said, I always come back and add some flux and just re-touch those up. There are big, big planes here, so I'd like to let that iron sit there for a little longer than I usually would. So moving on down the line, we'll go ahead and get this last one here. Keep wiggling, keep wiggling. Okay, so let's see if we can work this out. Just bending, bending these legs back straight. I'm not cutting the board. There we go, dropped right out. And this one is a 470 microfarad 35 volt. Dig around and see what we've got. And here we go. 470 microfarad, 35 volt. So we'll go ahead and put this one in. Tap this up. Same thing, come back with a little bit of flux. Just to make sure we're making good connections. I have not run into a case where I've used too much flux. Okay, go ahead and trim those. Okay, so to recap, pun intended, we've got this one, two, three, four, five done. So we've got three left, and I've got three capacitors left. So that makes sense. Let's go ahead and sneak in here and get one of these. And this one is a 470 mic microfarad 16 volt. And here it is. Okay, and that one was a another 470 10 volt. Last but not least, we have a 1000 microfarad 10 volt. Let's go ahead and get this one out. And there it is. Dishes are done, man. Hey, hey. Oh, Cleans them down to the shot. Ah!
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on recapping uh, the motherboard here. So I'm just going to start by taping off a few of these components that I do not want to melt. Okay, now that we've got the uh, plastic covered up with our captain tape so that we don't have to worry about melting it, I'll go ahead and begin removing these all off the board. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that, but I'll try to get you all some decent shots of this while I'm doing it. So here we go. So all these capacitors, I will go ahead and I always do this, uh, whether you um, find my service through um, eBay or, or through my website, always take all the old components, such as all the through hole Capacitors and then all the S and D capacitors. They all go back in the bag. Any other components are removed, say battery. Uh, and those will get sent back with the console. I'll always uh, send the customer a message and let them know that this is in there. And the only reason that it is in there is to show that the components have actually been removed uh, and that I did replace it with uh, uh, new caps. So everything's all nice and cooled off here. We'll go ahead and get our captain tape removed. I don't need it anymore. So I'm just going to go around and clean up all the uh, pads on here. Let's see. So I've got some uh, no clean wick. Okay, we got all those uh, pads cleaned up with our no clean wick, uh, and then came back and cleaned everything off with some isopropyl alcohol. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and begin uh, putting the new capacitors on. So here we go.
Okay, we got all those uh, capacitors replaced on the main board here. Uh, so let's go ahead and set that off to the side. And we'll go ahead and replace the capacitors on the um, uh, PCB for the uh, laser assembly. And now we can set this off to the side since we have all our capacitors swapped out of that. Okay, also included in the kit uh, from console 5 is the uh, uh, through-hole electrolytic capacitor to replace the one located on the uh, controller PCB here. It's a uh, 47 microfarad, 25 volt. So we'll just get this one desoldered and uh, solder in the middle. <laughs> And there we go, we got it replaced. Before we can uh, uh, start test fitting our uh, uh, DC HDMI mod kit, we need to remove a couple of pieces of this uh, uh, shielding. Um, and like I said, all this can be found over at uh, Dan's website. Uh, but we're gonna remove this piece here, as well as uh, this little piece up to just past uh, this uh, hole for uh, the screw. So we will just take our side cutters and I'm going to cut right in line with where that uh, cutout is. There you go. Uh, be careful because the edge will be sharp. Okay, and then I'm just going to take a regular pair of linemen pliers um, just kind of flatten this out a little there we go 
flatten out this section where I cut over here and then flatten out this back. Just gonna vise this down right there on that line. So we'll just bend this back. And just keep going back and forth like that. It shouldn't take long and it'll break loose and there you go. That way it doesn't leave a super uh, ragged edge. Now I do come back and I'll file all this down uh, on both sides a little just because I don't ever want to accidentally cut myself or somebody else is in here. Uh, later on down the line, they don't cut themselves either. But we'll do the same thing for this little section here. And there you go. Now we do have one more to do to the uh, top piece of metal shielding. Let me grab that. Do the same thing and cut right here. And for this one, I'll just take my little Lyman's pliers here and I'm going to use these and just bend back and forth. That gives us a spot for the uh, flat flex cable to actually run underneath around and to the top of this. Uh, all this is going to get filed. Remove the two pieces uh, from the top piece of shielding there. That's what those pieces look like. And then on the bottom shield, uh, remove the back right and left, which that piece looks like that, and that piece like that. So if your pieces look different, you might have cut off the wrong stuff. <laughs> need to go ahead and remove this little nub here. Uh, just take a pair of flush cuts. Well, that way this doesn't push up on the um, uh, mod chip. There we go. Okay. And with that out of there, go ahead and put our bottom shielding back in. And then you can see right where your uh, kit's going to go. So we'll get those holes uh, started. And then uh, lots of, if you're doing it right, lots of uh, uh, whittling with a final. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started on installing the uh, kit. Uh, so this is the uh, mod chip. Um, I'm just following the install guide as can be found on um, uh, Dan Coons' website. Uh, which is dansproject.com and that's where you're going to pre-order this kit if you uh, are looking to purchase one of these kits. Uh, you can get it through dansproject.com uh, and that's uh, Citrus 3000 PSI. Uh, that's his website. Um, so we're going to start. I already put the uh, protective backing on the uh, kit. That's step one over on uh, uh, the written tutorial for this. Um, they provide a 3D printed part, uh, which is a drill guide. Um, so I'm just going to follow along like on their uh, uh, website and uh, pre-drill these three. Uh, flip it over, pre-drill the two, and then uh, file it out and get it uh, get it ready for our uh, mini HDMI port. So get this going. I just want to make sure you leave three and a half spaces when you put this drill guide in here. And if you have any play in it, uh, this one has a little bit of play. I say if it if you have any play in this, just slide it down. Uh, towards the bottom and hold it tight there.
Okay, now that we have those holes drilled, just cut out what's left between those. Be careful. This is where I take my most time um, is working on the exterior part of the case here because you actually will see this. And I don't like those big rectangular holes and you and you you know not chamfered at all and you can kind of see some of the PCB depending on how big that hole is. I always try to make mine uh, as tight as possible. So uh, all I'm going to do is start filing this hole out. Every once in a while I will uh, throw the PCB back in here and just check and see uh, how much more I need to take out. So uh, we'll start on that. This usually takes me, I don't know, I'm getting quicker, but probably a good 10 to 15 minutes to get it the way I like it. So we'll see what we can get it down to today. Yeah, I, I like to try to chamfer these bottom edges as much as possible. Uh, that way you can't see uh, in there. So I take my time. That probably took me about 20 minutes uh, to get that uh, done just right. Okay, for this next part, we're going to uh, install these two mounting screws. Uh, I believe in Dan's video, he uses this one and one other. Uh, and when you use that one, it actually gives you a hole uh, through your sticker. Uh, somewhere around here um, so I opt uh, to use these two uh, that way aesthetically it looks better uh, I just take my time when I do it so I'll just double check make sure that I like exactly where this is sitting and I do so I'm going to go ahead and just drill through only the uh, metal shield I don't think I went quite through all the metal there but I did enough to make me a mark got all that uh, dusted back off I'm just gonna place my mod kit back in here and then we'll get our bolts. Oh, let me get this flak off the bottom here real quick Okay, and then I'll grab the uh, number one Phillips out of the iFixit kit. I'm just going to get that hand tight for now. Go ahead and get our other bolt. And now that we have the mod kit uh, anchored down, we can go ahead and install our Wi Fi antenna. I really do like this uh, Wi-Fi antenna because you can update your firmware uh, via Wi-Fi instead of like the high def NAS or the Ultra HDMI. You have to have a flash cart, uh, which is expensive if you don't have one. And this just comes in uh, with the kit. So we'll route this off in this direction. It's just got double-sided tape on the back. Get this mounted right about here. Okay guys, we're about to get started on the hardest part of this uh, install, which is getting this flat flex cable installed. Um, and this is definitely a little more trickier than the Ultra HDMI install um, because you have uh, they seem to me to be smaller pads. It's been uh, a couple of weeks since I've done an Ultra HDMI install, but these do seem to be a little smaller, and plus you have to make a 90 degree turn uh, around this chip here uh, uh, to solder these. Um, so if you are gonna try this, the one thing I can recommend is just make sure you use some good solder and lots of flux. Uh, 
And uh, also, I know what you're thinking. You're a phony! Hey, this guy's a great big phony! That's right, you're a big fat phony! Uh, hey, that's not the, the black cable that we saw earlier, or that you will see in the rest of this video. Uh, and that's because when I had filmed that, I didn't notice at the time that I was catching really bad glares anywhere I was trying to uh, solder. So I've changed my lighting up a little bit, and this is another one um, uh, that I'm doing for a customer. So uh, I'm going to try again to get uh, some better video of this. So here we go. Okay, guys, so we're going to get started here. Um, and the way... I will do this is pretty much the same way uh, Dan did it in his video. Uh, I thought that was a great idea since the back side of your flat flex cable has all the um, pads on it as well. You can just use the heat from your solder and iron to wick up the, um, the solder that's already in front of these pins um, just to help hold this in place and then come back with plenty of flux and, uh, uh, and just use a wipe technique to get the uh, uh, the solder on on the top of the pads so that's what we're going to shoot for uh, this camera is totally in my way oh uh, one thing we should definitely do first <laughs> is uh, we have to remove um, R609 and R610 uh, resistors so let's go ahead and do that and to do that we'll just flood them off the board with some uh, solder it, it is not hard to do Honestly, so let's see if we can do this first. Okay, so I always just add a uh, decent amount of solder to my uh, soldering iron, and I just come to one side and then start rocking back and forth. And there you go. I mean, components removed. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the other. Oh, earthquake! Uh, by the way, this is a extreme pain in the ass to try to solder with the camera right in front of your face doing this stuff, but I just like to do these videos so uh, people can see that I can get the job done and they know what they're getting uh, when they send their console off to me uh, to be modded. And also, if this uh, video works as a tutorial for you too, go ahead. Uh, but there are there probably are uh, a lot better tutorial videos for this so okay with those two uh, removed let me just grab a little bit of um, some desoldering wick clean up those pads bit of alcohol in there just to clean that up. It is no clean wick but I always use alcohol anyway. Okay and then also one of these uh, connections we have to make <clears throat> Excuse me. On the back side of this capacitor right here, um, we will have to make a solder connection with a flat flex cable. So let me bring this in so you can see that. Okay. So not only will we solder this to all these pins across here, but also uh, these two points here, catch the side of this resistor. Uh, catch this um, uh, pad here and then catch the uh, capacitor uh, and that's all in this area further down we'll have a little more to do and I'll cover that when we get there okay use plenty of flux whenever I'm doing this and then I'm just going to add a little heat and there you go that's it it's already tacked So now that I've got that one side done, I just want to kind of move this around a little. There we go. Or 
more flux. I always, I mean, I use plenty of flux. I'm just going to come through here and tack a couple of these. There you go. All right. Now that that's being held in place, we'll go ahead and add some more flux and some fresh silver bearing solder to all that. And see if I can do this without hitting the camera. So if you just use this white technique, uh, it is definitely the easiest way and, and less likely to bridge connections. It's already not looking bad. And like I said, lots of flux. I'll come back and add some more. And I'll do that again. I'll just add a little more solder. I just want to get those pins on top looking a little better. And just wiping downwards. So now what I'm going to do is go ahead and make all these connections here. So I'm going to solder here, here, these two pads here, and then right there where we added that extra solder on the uh, uh, leg of that capacitor. So once again, I always use plenty of flux. This might be in my way a little, but we'll see. Maybe I can do this. Oh, another earthquake. Tiny of this camera is right in the way. I can't get a good angle on that. Let's try that again. There we go. Another earthquake. If anybody knows of a uh, good camera that you can uh, zoom in with, because this is zoomed in and I'm still probably <laughs> only two and a half inches away. Oh, God. Okay, so now we'll go ahead and touch this pad here. And this pad here. Capacitor. I'm going to add just a little more solder and a little more flux. Flux is your friend, I'm telling you. Since I started using flux um, a lot more often, I have, uh, my soldering has increased probably tenfold. <laughs> okay, so with all those connections made, I'm going to move this camera around. It'll probably still be in the way, uh, but we'll see what we can do. I've got this zoomed in pretty good uh, to make all the less connections we need here. Uh, so all the way down this side and then at 90 degrees uh, this way. Let me catch those. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pins there. And not all these pins are used and you can see where the traces are running. So like these last three uh, pads here are just, just to help anchor this thing down. Um, and then also we have one more connection to make right here on uh, this resistor. Okay, so everything in the way here. I just want to kind of see I've got play side to side here, so just want to kind of line these up and see what I can. That does not look bad right there, actually. So I think what I'll do is I'll come in right here first and I'm just going to tap these down. And it's already holding in place. I don't, I, I, I've let go. Okay, on this back side, I'll hold this cable down a little and we'll do the same. And I'll go ahead and just add some more flux. Now we'll come back and have some solder on our soldering iron. 
Plenty of flux. And just wiping away from the chip. There you go. Looks like we've got a little bridge over there, but I'm not worried about that right now. Okay, and then over here where we have this bridge, I'll add some more flux and just come at it with my clean uh, soldering iron. There you go, that's it. I'm telling you, if you're having trouble soldering, use flux. Okay, so I'm gonna add some more and try to get some more on these uh, pins on this side. Looks like there's plenty of flux, but I don't care. I'm gonna add some more. A little bit of solder. There you go. Okay, I just wanted to show I I did actually have to go back and touch up a few more down on this uh, chip here. Uh, this one, this bottom pad right here, didn't have any solder on it. Uh, so you might have seen that in uh, the, uh, the last little section of video there. But after I got the camera out of the way, I came back uh, with my loop and, and cleaned everything up. Added some more flux. Like I said, you guys just use plenty of flux when you're doing this. So looking up here at the top, you can see all those are nice wetted uh, joints. Everything's looking good, nice and shiny. We use plenty of flux. We use good, high-quality solder. Uh, same thing with these pins down here. All that is looking great, making good connections, and even got our uh, our last little resistor here. Which, if you forget to get that one, it doesn't work. Which I've, <laughs> I I did that one time as well. So, uh, so uh, from now on, when you're seeing the <laughs> this cable in here, it'll actually be the uh, black cable and not this brown cable. But I just wanted to try to get a, a better shot of this video while I was doing that. So. Okay, now we've got to run our uh, wire, which will come from uh, these points here off the DC, DC HDMI and run to uh, R601 and R602, as well as the uh, test point for uh, reset here. So I'll go ahead and get these uh, tinned. I'm going to start this from the um, board side. So what you're looking at is R601 and R602. We'll add a little bit of fresh solder to both of those resistors there. Now this is where you don't want to float that off the board. And we'll just bring in our wire. Okay. We'll go ahead and get R602 first. We get that laying as flat as you can against the board. And then R601. Those are making good connection there. So now we'll go ahead and pull our green wire back and we'll get cut off and soldered to this. <clears throat> our green wire will get uh, cut off and cut off and soldered to this point uh, right here next to IC206. You see it right there. I 
Okay, and then I'm just gonna get a little fresh solder on these pads here of the DC HDMI. Okay, so our 601 will be soldered to P1. So I'm just gonna get these kind of cut for length. There we go, we've made our connection from our motherboard. R601 goes to pad P1. R602, the blue wire, goes to P2. And off of this test point here on the board, goes to the RST pad. Uh, the third pad here that says optional, uh, that is actually for the uh, GDMU uh, to utilize the button press on that. Okay, so now I'm going to get started on the uh, fan mod. Uh, I've ordered this just off of Amazon. Uh, it's just a Noctua 5 volt uh, fan. I'll try to leave the uh, link in the description for this. Uh, I 3D print uh, these pieces, uh, and that's thanks to uh, Greg Collins. Uh, and you can order this as a kit through Greg Collins. Uh, and then just put it all together yourself. Uh, and I believe he already uh, pre-wires uh, the 10K ohm resistor uh, in here. So I'm not gonna go into too much about um, uh, getting this wired up. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not extremely hard, especially if you're a do-it-yourselfer. Uh, but I will just say that uh, the red one here uh, is five volt, blue is ground, and the orange is your uh, signal or tech uh, line. Um, so I, I'm not going to go into too much detail. I'm just going to uh, take the fan and wire it up uh, using this connector uh, to be put back in here. Uh, and so well, we will continue on uh, after I have that done. Okay, I got this all wired up. I uh, figured I'd go ahead and show it before I get it all uh, uh, wrapped with a shrink tube. Um, so the red is our 5 volt on our Noctua fan, and the yellow is the signal line, and the black is ground. And then on our old connector, uh, orange is the signal line, blue is ground, and red is 5 volts. Um, Whenever you're wiring up this uh, Noctua fan to be used in the Dreamcast, it will not work. Well, it'll work, but your Dreamcast won't power on if you do not have a 10K ohm resistor soldered between your 5 volt line and your signal line. Um, so that's what I've got here. I've spliced further down the 5 volts, added in my 10K ohm resistor, and then further up, added the other side of that to the signal line so there's no way that any of these could ever touch each other uh, and then especially when I bring my uh, uh, my shrink tube down over everything and then this one comes up and slides over 
uh, everything so everything's nice and protected. So first thing I'm going to do before I do that is uh, off camera I'm going to go test this and just make sure that everything's working fine. If so we'll come back and uh, um, uh, heat up the shrink tube and then uh, uh, finish up our install. A few moments later. Uh, but everything's working fine the way we've got it so I'm just going to go ahead and get all this cleaned up and shrink tube uh, put on here. Okay, now that we have the, uh, the fan modded and uh, ready to be installed in here, we can go ahead and start putting everything back together. Uh, do want to say, uh, don't forget to put your thermal pads back in here. Uh, these are the two that we removed in the beginning. Um, and just when you're putting all this back together, make sure you're not pinching your wire anywhere. Uh, like this, this uh, run of wire here actually sits down in this track and just make sure that it's not getting up on top of these um, uh, posts or anything like that. There's plenty of room for it uh, to run down in here. Okay, so, oh, also I want to mention, um, if I was able to get these uh, tight enough to where I like it just using my fingers, but if you can't in the iFixit kit, uh, up top, number four here, uh, that is the exact size you need uh, to get on those nuts. Damn! Get on those nuts! So let's start putting this back together. I'm going to go ahead and uh, hook up our uh, flat flex cable. So our flat flex cable is uh, connected. So I like to just get these two ports in first. Okay, I'm going to turn this. Okay, so the next thing to look out for is to just make sure that um, the motherboard is actually getting into these two posts here. So, just like that. Alright, we got the motherboard uh, installed back in the case here. Um, one thing that you don't want to forget, because I always do, is to put this in right now before you put the um, uh, top metal shielding back in. Okay, and then we can go ahead and add our top piece. Uh, helps if you get it facing the right direction. Uh, same thing, I like to set this in the back first and then slowly work it down. And with this top shield on now, we can go ahead and start putting some of our screws back in. So if you remember, we have uh, three black screws here and one, two, three more black screws here. Okay, um, we can no longer put this screw in because that is where the uh, uh, flex cable is running. Uh, remember, we cut this out of the top shielding here and filed all that down so that we don't have to worry about this. Uh, cutting our uh, flex cable here and also so it's not dangerous for anybody else that get, gets inside this console. Um, but that screw will not be able to be put back. But we will install this screw uh, lo located down here by the uh, uh, where the power plugs into the board. Okay, let's go ahead and install our uh, power switch. Now we'll install this uh, plastic piece just to keep the bottom of your uh, power supply from touching any uh, of this uh, metal shielding below it. And we'll grab our refurbished power supply. Okay, and after that, we'll go ahead and get the disk drive back in here. All right, we'll go ahead and get our uh, controller uh, PCB. We had already replaced the, uh, uh, the old battery in here that was long dead, uh, replaced with a uh, socket and a brand new uh, lithium ion battery. 
And then for this, this will be the four longer brass colored screws. Okay, and I just noticed that I uh, haven't plugged in our power yet, so we'll go ahead and do that. All right. Now we'll go ahead and begin with our fan. We already have uh, pre-wired this, and like I said, if you order it from Greg, it's already pre-wired. Um, uh, but I've got 3D printers, so I print these myself, and it's not hard for me to uh, wire up a 10K ohm resistor in there. So, go ahead and get this installed. Okay, now we'll go ahead and get our fan installed. Just remember that the uh, sticker goes facing out of the console. Okay, and then uh, in the uh, in the box uh, for this kit that I order off of Amazon, uh, it, it has four of these uh, self-threading screws in it, and I believe Greg sends you something um, uh, with his kit too. So, so uh, just want to make sure if this is the first time that you're threading this, that you're holding the fan and the uh, shroud. Uh, this. Uh, 3D printed piece uh, tight together so that they thread in the correct position. We can go ahead and get our fan plugged in. Depending on uh, how much room you have, sometimes I'll run it this way if this has the GDMU installed, uh, but laying it right here in front uh, works fine as well. Um, so with all that we'll set this off to the side now so that we can install the rest of the uh, 3d printed pieces so I already showed this earlier but we'll go ahead and remove the spring and these two screws and then just remove the uh, old plastic lever here uh, the problem is is uh, the fan instead of be being uh, uh, parallel with the ground is now turned uh, 45 degrees so it's sitting like a diamond and it actually gets in the way of the old one well what Greg designed is it actually cuts out uh, the spot for the fan there uh, so that it's no longer in the way brilliant 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 okay so he has a few different designs up Greg uh, Collins does uh, this is the one I prefer um, uh, it's actually printed in two pieces uh, and then I end up having to file this down a little bit uh, uh, just to get the lid working right uh, and I've already done that just to save us some time so um, set that piece off to the side this just fits right in here like this and we'll get our two screws that have the washers already on them and then just bring our spring back. And there you go, that's it. So here we go. We'll get our top back on. Okay, and there it is guys, we got our Dreamcast fully refurbished uh, with brand new capacitors from console 5, uh, as well as the uh, Noctua fan mod uh, installed, and uh, replaced the uh, battery with a socket and a uh, uh, rechargeable battery, and also did the uh, DC HDMI install, uh, which looks great back here. Uh, so now we are ready to test this thing out, so let's do it. Okay guys, we got the uh, Dreamcast hooked up. I'm coming out of the mini HDMI port of the DC HDMI mod kit that we installed. Uh, straight out of that into the Elgato capture card in my PC. Uh, so we'll go ahead and crank this up. Move this out of the way. Uh, I'm not gonna go into this too much. There's tons of information out there as far as what you're able to get out of these uh, mod kits. I'm actually going to open this up and stop 
uh, the disk so it'll load into this menu so I don't have to worry about hitting uh, button presses and stuff like that so that I can show you the menu so uh, left trigger right trigger a X and start all at the same time is what's going to bring up the DC HDMI menu uh, if, you, if you're trying to push that too fast after you started the console it won't show up uh, you gotta wait maybe 15 seconds or so uh, then it'll it'll show up uh, and now it, it'll do it every time whether I'm in game or not uh, so in the DC HDMI menu uh, I can change the output resolution like I said I've already got it set to uh, 1080p so I'll just leave it there uh, and then you can adjust uh, advanced video settings uh, you've got a few options in there uh, scan lines you can turn those off and on and adjust the uh, intensity of them uh, video mode settings you can uh, force VGA cable to text switch trick uh, VGA uh, but the uh, main thing that I want to go into is you know, down here you have a test uh, screen and where you see all those hearts. I guess that's supposed to be if you had something wired up incorrectly. Instead of a heart showing up there, you would actually have a X uh, symbol show up there. But uh, we've got all hearts all the way across. Um, the coolest thing for me is the Wi-Fi and firmware upgrade. Uh, so you can come in here, change your SSID to uh, what it is on your home network. Uh, add your uh, password and then restart to apply the changes and then the next time you boot into your console it'll, your Wi-Fi will be uh, connected and then from there you could go through and update your firmware um, so you, you could start at check and then you go check your firmware see if there was any new firmware uh, if there was uh, then you could download it and then from there you could flash it and then from there you can restart your console and then your uh, firmware will all already be updated the next time you uh, start your console. Uh, if you buy a console pre-modded from me or if um, you send me your console uh, to have this kit installed in it, I already do all this for you. Um, so you'll have the latest firmware uh, as of the time of me modding that console uh, on it. Um, but this is way easier than say the high definess or the ultra HDMI mod kits. Um, since you don't need a ROM cart or something like that, which is just more money out of your pocket, uh, uh, having the Wi-Fi built in and be able to download the firmware uh, via Wi-Fi is awesome as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so I've got Resident Evil Code Veronica in here. I'm just going to let that boot up and uh, play the opening scene so you can watch that. And there you go, now I'm wanting to play some uh, uh, Resident Evil. <laughs> okay, and then I'll just select a new game real quick and let that boot up. Anyways, I uh, just want to say if you like this uh, content, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you're interested in me in having your modding your console or repairing or refurbishing your console, uh, you can contact me uh, through my email or uh, catch me on one of my eBay listings. I always recommend you go through my email uh, because I can save you some money since I'm not having to pay eBay fees for uh, any of the stuff that I run through uh, my website. So. Um, if you like it, uh, please hit that like button and subscribe, and if not, just pass it up. You don't need to do anything. <laughs> Anyways, guys, latest. It was... <clears throat> <clears throat> Mm-hmm.
Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Matt with Dragon Sword Gaming. But then that doesn't do anything uh, for us either as far as being able to plug the old fan back in. Uh, so I am working on... Go f*** yourself! That I did not realize I was having a, a uh, very large glare uh, right where I was trying to get all this done from. Um... What the f do you want? Um, so this is the uh, uh, Noctua fan. I'll try to leave a link in the description for this as well. Uh, maybe go f yourself. Uh, so now we are ready to test this thing out. So let's do it. Yeah. Hey you. No oh, recording video. Oh, great. Oh, that's whatever. I can edit it.